Hi everyone and welcome, this is The Apostate Prophet. Today I want to talk about one of the sad, terrible atrocities and disgusting sins that Islam has gladly banned. Is it wife beating? No. Is it slavery? No. Is it child marriage? No. I'm talking about something much worse than that. I'm talking about alcohol. Alcohol is haram. It is dirty disgusting. Now some Muslims might say, well, uh, wife beating is not forbidden, but if you ban alcohol, then you also decrease wife beating because men beat their wives when they drink alcohol. Of course, the same couldn't be said about child marriage. Muhammad didn't marry a child because he was drunk. Can you imagine that? Oh, my head. I was so drunk. I married my best friend's six-year-old daughter, and now I have a child bride. That's no issue. 14 centuries later, devout followers call her the mother of the believers, no matter that she was a child, no matter why you married a child. <laughs> Cults. Anyways, the point is, you don't marry a child because you are drunk. You marry a child because you're a m Alcohol doesn't make you marry a child. Islam does. In fact, let's look at this following chart in order to see what the probability is of you marrying a child when you are drunk versus when you believe in Islam. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, why did I even get into all of this? Let's continue with the great evil of drinking alcohol. Alcohol is forbidden in Islam, but Islam didn't immediately ban alcohol. It happened in stages. At first, the followers of Muhammad would apparently drink and get drunk on the battlefield or appear drunk to the prayer. Then the Quran told the people not to come to the prayer while they are intoxicated. Then the Quran told Muslims that there is goodness and sin in wine, but that the sin is greater. And eventually it told Muslims that alcohol is evil, haram, and that Muslims should from now on abstain from it. And then Muhammad started beating people who drink alcohol. Learning Muslims often ask why it wasn't immediately banned, why it took so long. Muslims then explain that it had to be done this way because people had to slowly get used to the right way. But that's a weird thing to say. Pork, for example, was immediately banned. Certain games were immediately banned. Interest was banned. Masturbation was banned. Dogs were banned. Perfume for women in public was banned. Pictures were banned. Hair extensions were banned. Using the wrong hand was banned. The veil, the hijab, was immediately introduced and women immediately covered up. While banning alcohol needed quite a time. I would fight anyone who claims that suddenly veiling yourself overnight is completely fine, while quitting alcohol is very hard. But then again, we're talking about Islam, and the proponents of Islam usually don't care about the feelings and struggles of women, who are merely the property in this religion that feeds the primitive machismo of men who are promised virgins with beautiful boobs in heaven. The alcohol ban probably took so long because Muhammad was in charge, and he just made decisions arbitrarily and not led by an almighty creator. Here is a hadith on how alcohol was banned. When the prohibition of wine was yet to be declared, Umar said, O oh Allah, give us a satisfactory explanation about wine. So the following verse of Surat al-Baqarah was revealed. They ask you concerning wine and gambling. Say, in them is great sin. Umar was then called, and it was recited to him. He said, O oh Allah, give us a satisfactory explanation about wine. Then the following verse of Surat al-Nisa was revealed. O oh, you who believe, don't approach prayers with an intoxicated mind. Umar was called again, and it was recited to him. He said, O oh Allah, give us a satisfactory explanation about wine. This verse was revealed. Will you not abstain? Umar said, we abstained. What is seemingly happening here is that Omar has an issue with alcohol, so he keeps approaching Muhammad about alcohol. And each time, the Quran, which is supposed to be miraculously revealed to Muhammad by Allah, says something new about alcohol, until it bans alcohol, and Omar is finally satisfied. What it looks like here is that Omar caused this ban on alcohol, and it is a sin to Muslims because of Omar. What it looks like to me is that Allah is merely the alter ego of our good friend Muhammad here, who is easily influenced by his good friend Omar. And Muhammad makes up Quran verses after Omar approaches him. Omar is essentially responsible for making this religion so strict. If you have seen earlier episodes on this channel, you should remember that Omar was also the person who similarly approached Muhammad about veiling women, until Allah suddenly revealed a verse ordering to veil women. And then Omar was satisfied. I see a pattern here. Can you imagine these alcohol revelations happening in action? 
Omar comes and says, tell us something about alcohol. Muhammad then says, there is goodness in drinking alcohol, but also sin. But you must know the sin is greater. Indeed, Allah is the most merciful, most wise. But Omar comes back and says, tell us something specific about alcohol. Muhammad then receives divine inspiration and goes, don't approach the prayer while you are drunk. Allah is the greatest and knows best. How about this, Omar? But Omar is not satisfied, so he goes and comes back and says, tell us something clear about alcohol. So Muhammad receives divine inspiration again and goes, indeed intoxicants are evil and are from Satan, so abstain from intoxicants. Allah is the greatest, most merciful. Are you happy now, Omar? Now please, f*** off. And Omar goes, yes, sure, good. I'll, I'll abstain from alcohol. Thanks, Allah. You always listen to me. Crazy. Allahu Akbar. We even see in a hadith that after alcohol was banned, people were confused and asked. Some Muslims were killed during the battle of Uhud while wine was in their stomachs. So Allah revealed, on those who believe and do good deeds, there is no blame for what they ate in the past. Dear Muslims, your most honorable fighters, companions of Muhammad, the purest people, used to drink and celebrate until alcohol suddenly became evil. All this makes less sense if we further look at alcohol and religion. Muslims would explain that abstaining from alcohol is about piety, and that alcohol is of course evil, because that's what Islam tells them. Alcohol was never banned in Christianity or Judaism. On the contrary, wine is often drunk by Jews and Christians, even for religious purposes or gatherings. Alcohol is only banned in Islam. Yes, contrary to popular Muslim belief, Christians and Jews never banned alcohol. Many of them drink it for religious purposes. If alcohol was dirty and evil from the very beginning, why wasn't it banned in Christianity and Judaism? Why did it take such a long time, even after Muhammad's prophethood started, that it became evil? Where was Allah's divine teaching all that time? In Abrahamic religion, what is shunned is usually excessive drinking, destructive drinking, while casual drinking is fine. I mean, wine is a healthy drink. Whiskey has very good health benefits, even for the brain. Many people are told to drink some alcoholic drinks for a diet, for health purposes. Of course, excessive drinking might be a problem, but banning it all together and declaring it evil and making it a sin, that's pretty tough. What comes to my mind is that the Quran alleges that Jews had harsh dietary laws because they were a wrongdoing people. But by this logic, considering that Muslims are the only ones to whom alcohol is seemingly forbidden, does this mean that Muslims are a wrongdoing people and Allah is punishing them? In fact, Allah punishes Muslims by banning alcohol in their worldly lives. But then he promises rivers of wine in heaven. Yes, the Quran actually lures people into obedience and religious war by promising drinks in heaven, together with divine vagina, of course but not the chosen servants of Allah. Those will have a provision determined, fruits, and they will be honored in gardens of pleasure, on thrones facing one another. There will be circulated among them a cup of wine from a flowing spring, white and delicious to the drinkers. No bad effect is there in it, nor from it will they be intoxicated. And with them will be women limiting their glances with large, beautiful eyes, as if they were delicate eggs, well protected eggs. So I abstain from wine here, then I go to heaven and drink wine that doesn't make me drunk, while being served by big-eyed sex servants, as I'm sitting on a throne facing other men who are being served by sex servants, and we have fun together. I'm not interested. If I have been signed up for this, I want to opt out right now. Please take me off this weird list if there is a list. I don't want it. I'm completely happy as an infidel. Thank you, Allah. I will go to hell. Imagine believing in this religion. It sounds more like all of this comes from the mind of a sick and primitive, perverted 7th century man, doesn't it? In fact, what a douchebag Muhammad was is further proven in a hadith. A man who had drunk wine was brought before the Prophet when he was in Hunayn. He, the prophet, threw some dust on his face. He then ordered his companions, and they beat him with their sandals and whatever they had in their hands. He then said to them, leave him, and they left him.
Muhammad has his mob by him and orders them to beat up a man because he got drunk. Instead of sitting down and using words of wisdom, instead of nicely explaining to him why drinking wine is bad and why he shouldn't do it. You know, instead of being a good example, instead of being the good prophet that Muslims often make him to be, Muhammad just is what he actually was. A douchebag who makes his bodyguards beat up people for drinking alcohol. Muhammad ordered to flog people who drink alcohol. After Muhammad died, people ruled that by Muhammad's example, those who drink alcohol should be flogged 40 times, or 80 times, and that they should be killed on the third offense based on a ruling by Muhammad for drinking alcohol. Muhammad also said that someone who drinks alcohol is not a believer while drinking, just like someone who commits adultery. He also said that not only those who drink, but also those who sell, buy, transfer, and those who are involved in the production of it are all cursed. And that this goes for all drinks that intoxicate you. And after you die, you can be tortured in hell for committing the great evil of drinking alcohol. It is a very sadistic idea that God would burn you in hell and torture you and make you drink boiling water because you used to drink occasionally. That is what Allah wants you to suffer for before you can go to heaven or stay in hell forever. For having drinks. Allah is definitely not a man of justice, let alone the Almighty Creator, the Most Merciful. If you want to worship me instead, I won't do that to you. Now go have a drink, please. It's definitely better than marrying a child, beating her if she doesn't obey you, and having slaves that you can have sex with instead when you're tired of your wife. Because those are not sins, and alcohol is. You don't pay for that in hell, but you pay for having a drink. Please have a drink. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share. Most of my videos are not monetized, and I seriously doubt that this one will be monetized. So you can watch videos without ads. If you want to support me at my work, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you all so much. I will be back with more. Have a great day and stay away from child marriage. <laughs> stay away from Islam.